When you've worked hard for your home and everything that's in it, you might want to protect it with a burglar alarm. Your insurance company will probably ask you to get it fitted by someone who's accredited by an official security approval body. If you get burgled, this certificate is a seal of approval, meaning that your insurer should pay out. But this certificate is a fake and it's not worth the paper it's written on. Do you know who's fitting your burglar alarm? Having your home burgled can take a great deal of getting over. But in Britain, it's a reality for one person every 40 seconds. There are over a million victims of burglary or attempted burglary across the country every year. Lorraine White knows how it feels. When I was burgled, my bedroom had been completely ransacked. My jewellery had been taken, other property had been taken. The burglar had stolen Lorraine's possessions and her confidence. You do not feel safe in your own home. Um, you feel very paranoid about locking doors and windows before you leave. Um, when you arrive home, is there someone in your house? You feel very vulnerable, very insecure. I needed a burglar alarm to help with the security in relation to that. Lorraine's insurance company said her burglar alarm would need to be fitted by a company approved by one of the two main security approval bodies, either NACOS, NSI, the National Security Inspectorate, or SSAIB, Security Systems and Alarms Inspections Board. You should be able to trust security companies with either of these stamps of approval. It means they vetted their employees. And going with an approved company means you're much more likely to get an insurance payout if you get burgled. Lorraine searched the web and found burglar alarm fitter Nick Parker. When I called Nick Parker on the telephone, I specifically mentioned that I needed him to be qualified, I needed him to be approved. He stated that he was, and that is a service he could provide for me. So I agreed to let him come along and give me a quote inside my property. Lorraine went with the quote. Nick Parker fitted the alarm and gave her everything she needed to satisfy her home insurance company. This was the certificate that I got sent from Nick Parker. As you can see, it says SSAIB, which is exactly what I needed to comply with the insurance company regulations. I sent that to my insurance company, they accepted it, and um, that's what gave me my house insurance cover. Lorraine was finally starting to feel secure in her own home. But all that was about to change. I received a telephone call from Trading Standards claiming that Nick Parker was actually a fraud. Nick Parker told me he was NACOS and SSAIB registered. Trading Standards informed me that he wasn't, um, he'd actually lied about that. It was time for Lorraine to look a little closer at the security certificate she'd given to her insurance company. I now know that this certificate is fake, everything on it is fake. The logo, the signature from the chief executive, who am I to question it? I can't tell a fake certificate from a genuine one. Lorraine had unwittingly misled her insurance company about the new alarm being approved. This fake certificate had left Lorraine uninsured for two years and at risk of losing everything for a second time. I was paying him to provide me with a service in relation to a burglar alarm that effectively was a waste of money because my insurance company wouldn't have paid out. Had it have happened to me a second time and not being covered by my house insurance and losing absolutely everything again, I don't know how I would have coped with that. Nick Parker made me feel very angry. I'd already been the victim of a burglary. I didn't want another criminal in my home and technically Nick Parker is a criminal because of what he's done. Shockingly, Nick Parker's fakery didn't stop at his claims of being double SAIB accredited. As Mark Rolfe from Kent Trading Standards discovered, Parker's claims of quick response times to his customers in Kent also didn't ring true. All of the numbers that Parker uses here are in effect fake local numbers. Uh, they're all genuine numbers in as much as they'll ring, but they'll ring on his mobile phone uh, at his business address in Thanet, um, which from some of these towns listed here uh, is an hour's drive. 
Um, so this is him making a fake claim to suggest that he is a local business based in all of these towns across Kent. As Parker's lies unravelled, Mark Rolfe discovered that he was also lying about being accredited to the highest NACOS gold standard. But Parker's fakery didn't stop there. Terry Roffey runs Brooks Security, a successful NACOS NSI accredited burglar alarm company in Kent. Terry's business was also to fall prey to Nick Parker. We've worked really hard at building up a reputation for quality service, uh, customer friendly, and then we had a call out of the blue from Trading Standards to tell us that uh, we had unhappy customers, they'd been misled, they've had to pay cash, um, level of service was poor. After a lengthy conversation with Trading Standards, the name Nick Parker came up. Terry was horrified to learn that Parker had been falsely trading under the name of Brook Security on a local website providing free business listings. This guy was trading under our name, um, issuing fake certificates really. Uh, we issue a certificate of compliance that's required by insurers or, or often required by insurers. And the work he was doing were, was in effect fake with, uh, with fake documentation. Terry showed Fake Britain what a genuine accredited security certificate should look like. It's got the name and address of the client, it's got the standard that the system has been installed to, it's got the details of the date of installation, information of our accreditation body, certificate number. So there's a lot of detail on that. This is one that was issued for a fake system. It has no detail of the standard that the system is installed to. It has no detail of the client's address and premises that it was installed at. It's totally fake, it's not worth the paper it's written on. To this day, Terry can't tell exactly how much Nick Parker's deception has cost his company. We would have had losses of thousands of pounds in lost income from the installation and ongoing support services that we provide to them over the years. By now, Mark Rolfe from Kent Trading Standards had enough evidence against Nick Parker. As far as he was concerned, Parker's fakery constituted a huge breach of trust. When we as homeowners uh, decide who to use to fit a burglar alarm to our house, we're actually trusting them with the security of our families and our possessions. For people to find out that actually their burglar alarm engineer uh, has committed fraud uh, to get the business from them, uh, actually undermines their confidence in the security industry. Finally, sentencing day arrived for Nick Parker and Mark Rolfe was there for the result. Nick Parker has been sentenced to 12 months imprisonment, suspended for two years, uh, to a nighttime curfew so he can't leave his home between 7 in the evening and 7 in the morning, uh, and to a £5,000 cost order. It's exactly the right kind of sentence for the kind of fakery and, and, and fraudulent behaviour that he was involved in. We tried to catch up with Mr. Parker. Just wondering if you've got anything to say to the victim. But he wasn't in a talkative mood. If you want to check if your alarm company is accredited with NACOS NSI or SSAIB, you can search for NSI approved companies on their website or search for a registered firm on the SSAIB website. <laughs>